This is Brewster with InstaTorque, and you're watching Dry to Lightning, the positively charged EV YouTube channel. Hey, it's time for the Aptera March update. Just dropped, and we're going to do a reaction video. I'm Chad with Dry to Lightning, and with me is Brewster from the Instant Torque YouTube channel. Brewster, thanks for being here for the ride. Thank you. Great to be here. Let's watch this thing and see what we can learn. Hi, Aptera fans. Steve here. Hi, Steve. Chad here. And it's Brewster. We've had an incredible month of momentum, so let's dive in. First up, the team had a great show at Interbattery in Korea, where thousands of people were introduced to Aptera for the first time. We also met with key suppliers to deep. I talked to Chris Brewster. I talked to Chris McCammon about the um, that what he's talking about there in Korea, and he said one of the biggest questions people kept asking is, "Does this thing fly?" It looks uh, like it could. It looks like it could. I thought that was a funny reaction. It's like, so uh, quick question. Does this thing fly? I mean, I just couldn't imagine asking it. I thought it was pretty hilarious. As we move closer to production, if you haven't seen the trip recap, check out the video in the top right. Next, we had the opportunity to display Aptera's body structure in Paris alongside Mitsubishi at JEC World, one of the largest international showcases of composite material innovation. A big thank you to both Mitsubishi and CPC for their support in making that happen. And now for the really exciting part. We took Hermes, our track testing vehicle, on an epic solar road trip. You have any comment, Brewster, on the names of these vehicles? I don't know. The numbers are easier for me to remember. I wasn't a fan of that. You do like the Alpha, Beta, Gamma. I'm like, you know, we don't... Why don't you just say like one, two, three? Starting in snowy Flagstaff, Arizona, and ending in the sun-soaked Imperial Valley. Hermes handled everything from mountain passes, desert winds, to highway cruising, all on a single charge, with solar power assisting the journey. If you haven't watched the full journey, please be sure to click the link at the top right. I can attest to you, you won't want to miss this adventure. Any thoughts on the black wheel pants? They do look uh, very cool. I, I know uh, Chris was saying in your interview that they just they did it so they could pop them off easily. But yeah, I, I think if you could make the whole vehicle look like that, it'd be very slick. Maybe a flame job on the side of the wheel pant, on the black wheel oh, pant. Yeah. yeah. Or instant torque logo on the side of the wheel pant. That'd be cool. That's right. Yeah. Hermes wasn't built for road trips. It was built to be disassembled and tested and refined and iterated on. It's a track testing vehicle meant to validate critical systems, but we couldn't resist taking it out on a 315 mile drive through I-40 and the Route 66 anyway. This wasn't intended to be a range test, but of course we ran the numbers anyway. Keep in mind, Hermes is a bit heavier than our design intent weight due to some of the steel metal components. And it's missing a few aerodynamic treatments, especially around the control arm. So drag was up and weight was up and efficiency wasn't expected to break any records. Do you feel like we're getting set up for a bad number here? He's like, well, drag was a little higher, weight was a little higher, so. Uh, yeah, I, I'm really surprised they released this data at all, and um, it's really not not so bad, especially considering it's highway miles. Yeah, I think they're juicy numbers. It's just the way you say it. It's almost like the uh, what do you call it? The under promise, over produce. I love it. I yeah. love it. Of course, you and I have seen it, so we're kind of giving away some info here, but we'll let it. We'll play it. But before we get to the results, let's have a quick look at the EV landscape. This graph shows the most popular EVs on the market today, ranked by energy efficiency. How about that F-150 Lightning? <laughs> that's, no, little, <laughs> that's pretty ridiculous, isn't it? I don't see on there the um, uh, the GM Hummer. Oh, yeah, that one would be at the very top. I, I wonder if it didn't have enough sales to like qualify for this graph. I'm surprised the Mach-E is that inefficient. Not that it's inefficient, but, you know, in comparison here. Right, yeah. On the far end, you've got the F-150 Lightning. On the high efficiency end, there's the Lucid Air and Tesla Model 3. And yet Hermes delivered an impressive 122 watt hours per mile. That's about twice as efficient as today's most efficient EVs. And it even outperformed Volkswagen's legendary XL1, a carbon fiber diesel electric hyper efficient marvel from the 2010s. That vehicle costs over a billion dollars to develop. We've now surpassed it on real roads, under real conditions, with a fraction of the budget and no special optimization. This wasn't a lab test or a carefully controlled EPA cycle. It was a highway driving, elevation changes, overtaking, real traffic, exactly the kind of driving up here was built for. And we didn't even start with a full battery pack. Even though we didn't orient Hermes for ideal solar charging, the 
panel still added. Any thoughts on the efficiency before he goes on to the uh, solar charging part? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so um, that number, the 122, if you convert that, it's it's like 8.2 miles per kilowatt hour. And then wow. that would be, if it's a usable 45 kilowatt hour battery pack, that's about 369 miles of range. But uh, it could be the low 300s if you, you know, if, if there's like a buffer of usable energy. So, um, and that's all highway or mostly highway. So I'm assuming that you could actually get um, a more efficient, more efficient numbers out of that. Um, and yeah, I think it's a really strong start, especially when they talk about the there's some aero efficiencies lost on the arm controls and just throughout the vehicle and the steel instead of aluminum. So there's a lot of promise there. And those numbers are already ridiculous. Like uh, yeah, people can sure. easily hypermile that to... 10 miles per kilowatt hour. That's amazing because if they're getting 360 plus, let's say they're just getting 300 highway only. That's right. way over 400 average uh, per that for that for that uh, battery pack. That that's interesting. So they they've got 122 watt hours per mile, but the original idea is, is to get it down to 100 watt hour, watt hours per mile. So that's a 22 percent less efficient vehicle than the the target. But that's, you know, there's a lot of factors there that you could you can factor in temperature, headwinds, uh, you know, so and, and uh, city driving. So I, I it could be actually less than 22, less 22 percent less efficient. And we'll get those real world numbers on PI3. Even though we didn't orient Hermes for ideal solar charging, the panel still added 2.4 kilowatt hours of energy during the trip, enough to cover 20 miles using nothing but the power of the sun. And that was on a partly cloudy day, not peak summer. What's especially significant is that most of this energy was harvested while the vehicle was in motion. Okay, let's get some takeaways, Brewster, because when I first saw those numbers, to me, it's just really impressive to get 20 miles of driving while you're driving. You know, when I think of the 40 miles a day they hope you'll get on a perfect day, I picture it just sitting still in the sun all day you know but now he's talking about driving cloudy the sun's hitting it from different angles do you have any thoughts on this it's impressive technology uh, the engineering that went into it where they can adapt individual cells on, on a real-time basis so you drive under a shadow it adjusts to get the maximum output um, or maximum input it, it's really incredible stuff and uh, even, I guess you have to think of the worst case scenario because uh, the optimism is it's going to be 40 miles a day. But in the real world, if, if you really think of the real numbers, I think as long as, I mean, for my driving needs, as minimum 15 miles a day is usable, I think. Anything below that is kind of gimmicky. But if you're getting a real 15, 20, 25 miles a day, you know, let's say it's the worst conditions, it's very cold, you've got, um, you, you're not getting a lot of sun you're still getting something usable and your battery's not draining while it's parked. So um, I, those are great numbers to hear right out of the bat. Yeah, I agree. And for us here in Michigan, we don't expect a huge amount from the solar all year. But if you just think of my daily bills, my electric bill is a lot higher in summer than in winter because in summer we cool with AC electric and we heat with natural gas in the winter. Right. So it'll be a nice little balancing act for me to be able to save money on charging in the summer. And I don't care if I spend a little more in the winter, That's you know, because it's just the way the bills go. Through varying sunlight and shaded conditions, who else can say they charge while driving? Uh, nobody. Hey, Brewster, what about this white box here with the green stripes? Is that where they're keeping Chris Anthony? Because yeah, I haven't seen him in months. They, lo they locked him in there. He, he can't come out until the, all the guys are built. <laughs> We're incredibly encouraged by these. You can't come out there and tell he's landed an investor for about sixty million dollars. <laughs> he's in there on his cell phone right here, you know, eating like the prepackaged emergency rations for the military. That's the live stream that we we're looking forward to. Yeah. <laughs> tradition vehicle, but based on our internal models, once we reduce weight to production spec, Aptera's efficiency should land exactly where we hoped, or even better. We're not celebrating just yet. There's that 22% you talked about. You just brought up the graphic. That's awesome. Efficiency should land exactly where we hoped, or even better. We're not celebrating just yet, but this marks a strong and exciting step forward. And it brings us even closer to delivering solar mobility to the world. But remember, 
this wasn't a full range test, just a validation run. The real testing begins with PI3, codename Gemini. While PI4, codename Artemis, is being prepared for road trips this summer, Gemini is coming together with the production weight components. That means aluminum instead of steel for certain parts. So it can hit the weight targets we've been designing for. This is a vehicle that will go through full efficiency testing, designed to deliver the range and efficiency figures that we expect your launch edition at Terra to achieve. As we've said in the past updates, we'll be driving it from a full charge to 0% battery on a closed track with a third party validating the results. I wonder if that's the answer to your question you had earlier about the whole battery pack being usable. Because I know some batteries do have like a 10% buffer on the top or the bottom, or manufacturers might even recommend you don't use the bottom 20 or the top 20. Uh, I don't live by that. You know, I run mine down to a mile and I charge them all the way up and have been for years. But uh, if they're going to drive it to zero, I wonder if that's the answer. It's like, no, we don't have any buffer. You just, you know, these batteries are a lot better, Brewster, than people thought they were a couple years ago. They're amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. Sometimes manufacturers, they don't really tell you, they just give you a kilowatt hour, but they don't tell you what the, uh, what, what you have access to. So some of it, uh, you can't actually drain to zero. So oh, yes. I, gotcha. I don't know how much it will be, but I imagine it will be possibly up to, up to like five kilowatt hours, maybe just mm -hmm. a one or two. But yeah, it'll be a good question. We'll ask him when we get to that point for sure. Our battery modules are being completed for integration into the next packs and the full wire harness is scheduled for installation in PI4 next week. This marks the beginning of a fully feature complete production intent vehicle inside and out. Every system you can expect on your Aptair, including the vision system, infotainment, and climate control, will be in this vehicle. We plan to do a road trip across the U.S. this summer to meet Aptair reservation holders and supporters in person with this amazing vehicle. This would be a good place to put your address on the screen, Brewster, so they can get to you when they go on tour. That's right. we got to yeah. start a petition to have them go uh, up to Michigan. Yeah, that'd be great. we got to get them to Michigan. Stay tuned for more details on that soon. Now, I want to share details on a contest that we're running. Thanks to you, Aptera is now the second most engaged EV brand on YouTube. How about that? Like 275,000 in three months, then there's like 42,000. Right, but you have to think of it as an S-curve. This is just the beginning. Just, just give it a couple of years. Yeah. I'm looking at those. I don't follow Polster at all. I keep a side eye on yeah. Rivian because they're all over uh, my town. A lot of people drive Rivians. I am a huge fan of Lucid Motors, but even as such, I don't go seek out videos about Lucid Motors. There's like three of them in town, and I just kind of drool when I see them. But I watch every Aptera video. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess maybe if uh, Elon Musk starts tweeting about Aptera. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Those Tesla videos, they might not all be positive Tesla views. I don't know. I mean, who knows? Right behind Tesla. Right. And to celebrate that, we're launching a YouTube subscription contest. If you subscribe to the Aptera YouTube channel and leave a comment on the road trip video, you'll be entered to win a free reservation, free tent kit, and a $100 merch coupon. A solar prize pack worth about 800 bucks. So don't miss your chance to win. And may the odds be in your favor. Bye. And this is a good time to announce our contest that Bruce and I are having. If you subscribe to this channel and then you subscribe to the Instant Torque channel, you will get to be awesome. That's, that's right. It. Guaranteed awesome. You're guaranteed awesome. And that's what you get. And if you become a member, then, you, then you're super awesome. So there you go. Finally, our finance team has been working hard on the plan to get us into production. We'll be pulling back the curtain in the next week or so, sharing insights on the different financial levers that we're using to make this a reality. Any speculation, Brewster, on the financial levers to get to production? I mean, I, that's the million dollar question. I'm really excited to hear about that. Um, you know, they, they, it's incredible what they've done. There's so much, I'm, I'm just so impressed with just in the last couple of months, all the validation and testing they've been able to do on a shoestring budget and the firmware engineering. A lot of pieces are coming together, but you know, the, that's the million dollar question is uh, um, how do you get to production? How do you fund it? And uh, I'm really excited to hear uh, what information they have for us. I think the, uh, I agree with you on all of those things, but I feel also, and I think you do too, as they release real world data, like even the two bits we got today 
about the solar intake and the efficiency. Uh, and you can actually see real numbers like this is where we're at, this is where we want to be. I feel like that's got to be exciting to investors to see real, real data come. So I think that's a big Absolutely. deal. And the other big deal, and tell me what you think about this. I think getting the, one of these prototypes on the road, uh, protection, uh, production intent vehicles rather, so p more people can see them. Because like he was saying in the uh, road trip video, the last video they made, it was like the first time, or Chris told me actually in the interview, it was like the first time this thing's actually on highways and actually out mm -hmm. in public, not just tooling around Carlsbad. That's a huge deal, I think. People seeing this thing and, and thinking, what is this? Absolutely, yeah. I, I think um, the, the more people see it, um, I, right now it's kind of a, a secret for most of the country. P most people have no idea what it is. But um, the, I think there's going to be a turning point where it's in public consciousness um, when you have, uh, who knows exactly what it's going to be, but you, if you have a lot of media covering it or uh, where, wherever the turning point is, uh, you know, it'll tip in the direction of consci public consciousness, but it's definitely not there yet. And for now, you just type, you just Google space car, space car. That's how you'll yeah. find it. Google space car. <laughs> um, something from the CT post for Noir. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, it's, I think the like, last thing he says is goodbye here. Let's see. We think you're really going to like what we have in store. Thanks for being on this journey with us. See you soon. We'll see you soon, Steve, and we'll see you soon, Brewster. Thanks for being here, being a part of the March recap for us. We enjoyed always talking to you, and I know our audience is going to love hearing from you. Thank you very much. Yeah, this was a really exciting update. Uh, glad to be here. Thank you for the coffee, Lynn. We appreciate you so much. And, of course, our good friend Bob Newchow, always so supportive. Thank you for the coffees this week. And Tom Bouchaw, we appreciate you so much. And thank you for the coffee. You're all a big part of what we do, and we wouldn't do it if it wasn't for you. Thank you. Thank you so much to the members of the channel. You're the ones that keep the wheels churning on the positively charged YouTube channel. There's no way we can tell you how much we appreciate you. Thank you.